is to provoke. Where's the fight in you? Where's that lion and lioness on the inside of you? And so I trust this is going to be a tremendous blessing to you, this word. I want this word to stick with you like glue, stuck like Chuck. It's going to be a real powerful word. I want to provoke you this morning to bring out the fight inside of you. It's amazing how many times we just tolerate and accept things. I always say this, never, ever, ever complain about what you allow. So there's a lot of things that we've been allowing um, with our finances, with our health, with our relationships, um, just with so many different things that we just learn to uh, what I call the spirit of adaptability. You just begin to adapt to adaptability. You just begin to adapt to things. And next thing you know, you're just conforming to something that's totally not your will, not your desire, not your highest potential. So let's talk about this today as I want to challenge you to bring out the fight on the inside of you. The days that we're living in right now is absolutely requiring this. It's an age of, of a warrior, of a fighter, because the enemy has a plan. And he is absolutely, it's kind of like he's coming at everything full blast with AK-47s, launch missiles, hand grenades, everything he's got. And in many ways, the church is like with a water gun. Psh, 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 psh. Hey, guys, we got to step up our game and be a step ahead of the enemy. And guess what? The potential to do that is on the inside of you. Because why? How do we know that? What premise do I have in the word of God? Because you know I'm a word woman. Here it is. You ready? Drum roll. Greater is he that is in you, in you, in you. Hmm. Scripture didn't say outside of you. It said in you. So that means you have a will every day, every morning, every second. Am I going to will my mind to identify and connect with the greater one in me or I'm out here chicka 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 trying to thinking I'm doing stuff on my own. You're not. There's a greater one inside. So you need to yield to that. Let's look at some examples in the word of God as we get ready for sisters in power in the world, which now is added to, oh, I should have pulled it up. To, uh, Robin, help me out. It was, uh, pull it up on Robin's, Robin's um, text to me, Brandon, right quick. It is, let's see, solutions equipping you to win that's what's going to happen march the 4th through the 7th solutions equipping you to win we're going to have my dear friend michelle mahaman kenny she's getting ready to have an incredible relationship um seminar that's coming up the first of march as well a few days right before our so and you don't want to miss that she and i are going to be going on live sometime today make sure you keep your notifications on it's going to be so powerful it's a networking of the body coming together yes sisters coming together but you know what we can't leave out the brother so we have so and bro what is bro bro is brothers reaching others how about that brothers reaching others and sisters empowering the world and the two coming together for solution solutions equipped for you equipping you to win here's another one you're going to love this we rolled these out on last night we are bringing and we are rolling out and, and and exposing and revealing and unloading on march the 4th through the 7th we see what's going on around us we don't like it we're not wimps we're not going to lay down and take this he can't have our children he can't have our culture he can't have our economy he can't have our nation our world he can't have it the enemy cannot have it. He's been trying this from the beginning of time. He's been trying to dominate culture as he did with Daniel to try to get the children of Israel, the Hebrews, to conform to a Babylonian culture. Talk about cancel culture, <laughs> really? He's tried to do this with in Egypt with Pharaoh to get the children of Israel to conform to an Egyptian culture. It happened over and over again. Same with Persia, uh, with Esther. And so it's happened over and over again to try to conform us to this culture. But what does the word of God say? I'm a word woman. What does the word of God say? The word says, the word says, the word says, the word says. How much up on you with your word? How are you up on your word? The word says, we are conformed to the image of his dear son. The word talks about conformity somewhere else. You ready for conformity? It says, let this word of God be in you. It says that. We are renewed by the word of God. The word of God will, we're not conformed to this world. 
be not conformed. He, he tells you that Paul says, be not conformed to this word. You know, they're right now pushing real big a Queen's Bible. It's already out and pushing uh, several different sects like the black Hebrew Israelites are, they dismiss the Pauline epistles, the writings of Paul's. Can you imagine those Pauline epistles were canonized? God allowed them to be canonized because those are the daily, simple daily discipline. Pay attention to this. They are the character building books in the Bible, like never before for the, before for the New Testament believer. Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, First and Second Thessalonians. Are you really? We can't dismiss that. He said. Don't be conformed to this world, but rather be what? So if you're not going to be conformed to this world, because they're trying to conform us, y'all. Hey, they're trying to conform us. They're trying to conform us. They're trying to conform our children. They're trying to conform us to dismiss the Bible. They're trying to conform us to make evil right and, and, and make what's right, wrong, and evil. They're trying to conform us to be desensitized and to allow immorality and perversion to be normalized. But guess what? We're not going to be conformed. We're going to be rather, he says, be transformed. That's what we're going to be transformed. How do you get transformed? I'm so glad that the Bible gives you solutions. We're talking about solutions equipped to win. March 4th through 7th. Solutions equipped to win. March 4th through 7th. Solutions that will equip you to win. You need to win on a higher scale. What I see happening, I just said this to Val this morning. I said, Val, I see what's happening. People are literally in their brain still stuck on the simple daily disciplines, the simple habits that they were operating it, operating on pre-COVID. Can't do it. It's a different season. So I find myself when it's three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, first of all, continuing to listen and listening first gives you those instructions at the top of the day where you're a step ahead of the enemy. As we begin to invoke the fight on the inside of us and the lion and the lioness on the inside of us. Let's go to the word of God. We got one more. Not only on March the 4th through the 7th, are we giving you solutions equipped to operate uh, to win, but solutions coming together with strategies, tactical plans, solutions equipping you. And these solutions are solutions of godly wisdom, solutions equipped with godly wisdom, S-E-W. So next one. Oh, I like this one. Robin, this was a real girl. You really, you get went all out on this one. Solutions equipping us for these times right now to weather the storms. There's some storms going across the nation right now. I and mean, they're telling me like in Texas, these people, they're not used to snow. They're not used to ice storms and stuff. And they're just like 132 pile up. Uh, one of my friends, Roz, was telling me last night on yesterday, she was saying how, you know, they're driving too fast and they, they not, they don't, they're not equipped for the storms. They were not equipped for the storms. They were not equipped for this type of storm. There is a type of storm that the enemy wants to launch against your health, your finances, your family, relationships, your future, your peace, your healing. He wants to launch a storm. But I'm here to tell you, God has equipped you to weather the storm. God has equipped you to win. And God has equipped you with godly wisdom. So let's get ready to hop into the word this morning. We look in the word of God where we see. I always like to take you to the word and give you accounts from the word of God. We look in the Bible in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17th chapter, 34th verse. Because remember, we got to include the men as well. And once I give you the scripture, we're going to roll into Kalita, which is one of the powerful psalmists that we're having all the way from South Africa. We're going to expose you to some different artists. I remember when Yolanda first introduced me to Lyra. Man, I've been hooked on her ever since, a South African artist. Oh, such soulful sounds and words that are just like, thought-provoking and uplifting. Well, Kalita has incredible lyrics and anointed. She just happens to be the daughter of Dr. Pearl Coupe, which is also one of our powerful um, speakers and lecturers and, and uh, coming from the whole legal judicial mountain, that whole mountain of law and judicial. She's going to be representing that and showing us the power of women 
and men coming together to be able to have strategies to combat the wiles of the enemy and the laws that the enemy is in trying to legislate over us and over our children. Kalita is going to be coming right after I give this scripture with David and uh, powerful, powerful, powerful. You don't want to miss it. There are, you go to sisters empoweringtheworld.com to register to hold your spot just for $25. But in a couple of weeks, this thing is coming up. The type of information you're going to walk away with, uh, the, 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 the manuals, the teaching materials that you're going to walk away with far exceed the investment that you make for the conclave and the Congress. And we'll start naming out who some of the other speakers are and start rolling out their videos. Um, okay, Samuel, first Samuel 17, 34, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion, talk about the fight in you. So this was the fight that David fought before Goliath. Some of you trying to take on a Goliath and you haven't mastered your lion. You haven't mastered your lion yet. You haven't mastered your bear yet. You still letting the bear and the lion defeat you. Come on now. You have in you the greater one and the potential to slay that lion and to slay that bear. He says, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or bear both came out and they carried off one of the sheep. David loved those sheep so much when that lion came and, 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 and took one of his sheep and, and another account when the bear came and took one of the sheep, he rose up. He said, I went after it. Look at the 35th verse. I went after it he ran to the roar he ran to the roar with the lion he didn't run from the roar he didn't run from the lion from the bear he ran to it face off head on face off it's time to face off with the enemy face off concerning your finances the ability to operate in a millionaire status is in you is in let me just say this very briefly you know we're coming to you from the Teen Pregnancy Center. Ashley, you can get ready for Kalita to, to queue up Kalita. And everything that you're looking at right now as we're transforming this whole place to a place of opulence has been used first for young girls uh, that are that were developing in life and as a mentor, as they were, you know, leading them into life and getting proper direction and finding the plan and the purpose of God for their life. Then it was used for Global Leadership Training Center. Then it was used for Sisters in Power in the World from the conception, the house, from the time it was built. No one ever lived here before me, built from the ground up. Um, by an Egyptian. Um, and um, now it has, we're redefining the purpose of this center, of this place, and is to help young girls, teen crisis pregnancy, uh, young women that are questioning and battling, confused and battling with their gender, young girls, uh, people, women that have been rescued out of trafficking. And everything you see around here even in acquiring this property, it came, Yolanda remembers, Chevelle remembers, it didn't come without a fight. I was literally had money down on another property. The people that were my broker, my agents, literally stole $31,000 from me for a property here in Atlanta that I was getting ready to purchase. And the money was supposed to be an escrow. It was a fraudulent escrow account, long story. They stole the 31000 never got the money back. But you know what? I didn't have to go after them in any kind of way. I just reported them to God. God dealt with them. There is something about when you put your mouth on and when you come against the people of God, beware, beware. She got up and drank a glass of orange juice, 31 years old, dropped dead. I never wished it. I never had any ill will. I had forgiven them and moved on. What did God do? Because I forgave them and moved on. The builder who was an award winner builder in Atlanta, Georgia, award winner builder in Atlanta, Ralph Youssef, he's dead now, uh, took him out on that deck and says, this is what I want to use this property for. And it was way beyond what I would have qualified for in the loan. So he literally, God touched his heart. And in order to get this 10,000 square foot property on a lake with two acres privacy lot, he would have had to literally forfeit his profit and sell the house at cost. And on top of that, to get it down to what I qualified for, the agents, which meant that their percentage of what they would have been making on what the house was listed for, which is meaning they're going to be making a lesser commission. Ooh, were they storming? Um, 
because I talked to the to the builder who was the who was the designer, the manufacturer. He he's the one that built it. And I said to him, this is the purpose. He at that time was battling a an incurable heart disease and he laid on die, but he got a chance to take this property and use it for the glory of God. And so here we are now. He's gone and this property is still being used. But what am I telling that story to say? It didn't come without a fight. I could have just tucked my tail between my legs. They sold $31,000 for me. Now I won't be able to get a house. I got to go back and forth to court battling with them, trying to get my money. You know how? Really? She died. So I took it like David. I took it to the higher, to the one who is the source, almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as a result, we're still here today. David didn't tuck his tail between his legs when he saw the lion coming after him and the bear coming after him. That fight rose up on the inside of him because he cared about those sheep. He cared about his flock and he went after. He went after. I'm challenging you this morning. You need to not only put up a defense against the enemy. I want you to go from a position of defense to a position of offense. I want you to go to a position of offense when it comes to the curriculum that's being taught to our kids. I want you to go to a curriculum of offense as what the enemy is trying to do with our economy right now. I want you to begin to believe regardless of the fact that I'm in a pandemic and things look like where my cash flow normally came and my strings of income usually came. I want you to be on top of your game concerning your business. Those of you that are entrepreneurs, those of you that are working on a nine to five job, those of you that whatever your streams of income have been, where your resources come in, you speak to your resources and you command your resources. I do not give you permission to shift. I do not give you permission to shift. Did you hear that? I did not give you permission to dry up. I did not give you permission to slow down. I did not give you permission to shift. You speak to it, you run to the challenge, you run to the roar, and you command in the name of Jesus, begin to release into the atmosphere, my God shall supply, my God shall supply. God, I feel the anointing. No wonder it's so anointed out here in this area right here. We're going to be coming from here because this is the incubation birthing center right here is where we birth miracles in this little proximity here. He said he would supply your need. He didn't say according to the pandemic, according to the economy, based on any particular administration, based on the economy in South Africa, based on the economy in Nigeria, based on the economy in England. He never said this. He said, according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So your source and your streams of income were never based on this present economy. God never designed us to live dependent on this world's economy we live with the economy from another kingdom let's get ready for Kalita to just bless us this morning or today and whatever time this is being aired I'm telling you there are times in our life that there are open windows of opportunity prophetic open windows March the 4th through the 7th don't miss it and interesting enough in that first beginning part of that month also, my dear friend, Michelle, Dr. Michelle Mohammed Kenny, she's going to be having an incredible, and it's discounted as well, dealing with your relationships. The first three months of the year set the trajectory of the year. So you can't play on, I mean, you got one more month left. You got a couple of weeks left to get things straight. Some of you started out with New Year's resolution. You already fell off the wagon, okay? Some of you never got on the wagon. So you got just a few more weeks to shift it in your head, to make a shift in your head, get it together. Guess what I'm making myself do when I end this? I don't care if I stay on that elliptical and that bicycle in my bedroom for 10 minutes. I'm getting on that bike. I'm getting on that elliptical. And start a regiment of discipline. And there's something about the endorphins that are released in your mind once you start disciplining that body buffeting that body, it shifts and it causes things to line up even in your thinking. So let's get ready. I'm today going to the word of God, three other accounts very briefly, and provoking the fight in you. Let Kalita get ready to just take us on to another level. Kalita from South Africa, and we're going to show you how you can order her CDs. Daughter of Dr. Pearl Coupe.
get um ashton to put up on the screen at the end of the broadcast i just text pearl how you can directly order that cd uh, powerful powerful power kalita from south africa this is just one of the what you can expect march the 4th through the 7th and then her mother dr pearl coupe and then we have my friend michelle mohammed kenny she's doing her relationship uh, seminar uh and we have wali akimi from kenya originally from nigeria by way of kenya the man who lost $6 million and got it back. 
and he's going to be bringing some very powerful people to our conclave to our summit we have uh so very 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 excited to not only have these but the president the founder of the world economic congress you some of you watched last week dr shushanga shushangu is coming and he dr alex has got an a, a, a knowledge a walking encyclopedia of knowledge concerning untapped wealth in africa that is waiting on you and us and others to come and be partakers especially the descendants of the african diaspora to come and tap into the inherited wealth that is your portion some of you've never even thought about businesses in south africa we just purchased a house in south africa paid cash for it in santa and turning it to it is the vision house south africa this is the vision house atlanta and we have redefined the purpose of that vision house from the people who formerly owned the house i think in russia or australia somewhere now that house is going to be used to bring in young kids uh, we'll rotate them through to the tune of 12,700 kids uh, on a week and a weekend basis so they can come and be exposed to opulence and do, we'll do some life skill training and helping and train these kids and get them prepared and expose them to a life a gated community, swimming pool, maids quarters or helpers quarters or whatever. And uh, and many of them coming to experience something that their parents never experienced. And mostly, of course, the orphans, uh, those that are there, most of them haven't even never, have never had an opportunity to know their parents. And then here stateside, our vision house stateside, you're getting a little tiny bit of a glimpse of it today as we come live uh, for our vision house here to rescue this generation, to fight, to fight, to fight, to fight for this generation. Uh, we see also outside of the account of David in 1 Samuel 17, 34, we see another account in the word of God where you see that there are just some things that don't come without a fight. We see here in, um, I want you to turn with me very quickly. Some of you may be in the car on your way to work already, but let me give you another account that you're going to absolutely like. We go, these things are there for our uh, they're there for our example. In Matthew, the 15th chapter, the 22nd through the 28th verse, look at this. This woman was a Canaanite woman. And the Bible says in uh, Matthew 15, 22 through 28, the Bible says that the faith of this woman, the fight, they, I say the fight of this woman, the fight of this woman, a Canaanite woman from a vicinity came out crying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed. How many of you watching right now, your children are acting like they totally demon possessed. They're acting like they never been to church. They're acting like they never knew God. And you like, what kind of devil is influencing my child? They're, 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 you, they were born this way. Now they are saying they're another way. They're born in the, you know, believing in the things of God. And now they don't want to have anything to do with church. And they're calling, you know, Christianity a white man's religion and just being influenced, influenced, influenced. And you know, this is not the child you gave birth to. And you know, this is not what you put inside of them. Well, look at this mother who had a demon possessed daughter. She had a demon who am I talking to today? Your daughter acting like she's demon possessed, rebellious, just can't seem to break the cycle of what's going on in her mind. Well, I got hope for you. And I'm telling you, mother, father, auntie, uncle, you better get ready to fight. This woman was willing to fight. Let's look at her fight. The Bible says she has a demon possessed daughter. She'd been suffering terribly. And you know, them demons come out at three and four o'clock and two and three and four o'clock. So the mother was like piping, not able to really sleep. And you know, some folks just be the demon possessed when they haven't had any sleep. Like she, she probably was like irritable. I've not been able to sleep. She couldn't have a normal life. Just think about it. She couldn't even invite probably her friends over for tea, like the normal women in the culture. And, you know, even to leave, to go to the market and shop, she's gone, the daughter tearing up the house like the Tasmanian devil when she get back. Or if she tried to invite her friends to tea, then you don't know when the daughter going to cut up and be walking around. Some of you got daughters walking around and sons walking around with attitudes. It's like it's the devil himself. You don't have to tolerate that and put up with that. You need to decree and declare as for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. And you determine the atmosphere in your household. You don't let the devil come up and in and just run havoc in your house. No, you don't let him. He doesn't pay any mortgage. 
So here it says that the, she was suffering terribly and Jesus did not answer her a word. Can you imagine that? He didn't say a thing. Now for most sisters, that right there, when you go and you're talking to somebody that my daughter is demon possessed and you are crying out, the Bible says she cried out. She cried out. So she's just bearing out her heart that my daughter's demon possessed and he didn't even answer. It's like he ignored her. He didn't even answer her, but he wasn't ignoring her. He was provoking the fight in her. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. And she kept on crying. The more they tried to send her away, the more this sister just kept crying out. She wouldn't let go. She began to cry out. And they said, send her away. She's crying after us. And he answered and he says, he now he checks the disciples. He says, he says, I was sent only. Now you talk about provoking the woman. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. So that would have been enough for the woman to say, basically Jesus was saying, I wasn't sent for you. It's not your time. I'm sent to the lost sheep of Israel first. And the woman came and knelt before him. Now, she still wouldn't go anywhere. She just refused to be denied. The fight rose up in her and she refused to be denied. Who am I talking to today? She refused to be denied. I refuse to accept my child like this. I re refuse to accept my economy like this. I refuse to accept my health like this. I refuse to accept my relationships like this. I refuse to accept my present like this. She refused and she knelt down. She humbled herself in front of the person that had her solution. She wouldn't leave. She wouldn't go anywhere. And so here the Bible says when she just, she, and, and instead she cried out loud and said, help me. The Bible says, she said, Lord, help me. Look at it. She said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. The moment she said, Lord, help me, guess what she did? She invoked a fight because now he was obligated because the Bible says, Romans 10, 13, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered. So when she said, Lord, some of you need to open up your mouth, begin to put that in the chat right now. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Right now, I need help today. Lord, help me. Don't you sit up there trying to be cute. Lord, help me. And the moment she said, Lord, help me, she obligated him to rise up and fight for her because the scripture says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And he replied again, it's not right to take what is allocated at this portion of time for the children of Israel and to give it to dogs. Oh, he called the woman a dog. And you know what a female dog is. He called the woman a dog, a female dog. He called one of you would have been so insulted and offended. You'd have packed up your stuff and told him where to go. But she would not be denied. What? Because she had she been provoked to fight fighting for her daughter, fighting for her child. My child, this is not my child. There's somebody else living inside of my child. There's something else living inside of my child. I want my son back. I want my daughter back. Who am I talking to today? I want my son back. I want my daughter back. Some niece, some, some uh, uh, aunties and uncles, you need to begin to decree this right now over your nieces and nephews that you knew they grew up in the church. They grew up in the things of God. And now they're like, they don't want to have anything to do with the things of God. They're finding their own relevant truth. I'm here to say you can call them back. You can call them back. Say, I want them back. Lord, help me. I want them back. I want them to come back to the household of faith. She fought. She put up a fight. And he said, it's not right for me to take what's allocated for the children and give it to the dogs. And she came back with a left hook. A type of a left hook. Like, I'm not going down like this. She came back and she said, but yes, okay, I'm a dog. You say I'm a dog. I'll take that. I'll take that because we, you know, we are off cast from the full breed of Israel. She says, but even the dogs, she didn't even deny when he said the dog, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. She says, I deserve the crumbs. And I love the way she look at this because in a way it can look a little demenial like, you know, he's talking, she's saying, just give, you know, 
I can take the crumbs. Like I'm really to just take whatever left over. But I look at it this way. My mind thinks like this. She was like, okay, I'm not qualified according to the timetable to get the whole loaf right now. Because Jesus hasn't gone to the cross. But she's saying, I'm not like everybody else. I don't even need that to fight. For it. Some people need the whole loaf to fight. Some people need the whole loaf to walk in the covenant. I don't need the whole loaf. She was like, just give me a crumb. Just a crumb. And that's enough for me to fight with. That's all I need. A crumb. Yolanda, is there anything that's a crumb like a piece of bread or cracker or whatever in the closet? She said, all I need is a crumb. Just give me some chips in there. All I need is just a crumb. And just think, because she knew that what's in the loaf is in the crumb. All the ingredients in the loaf is in the crumb. It's just a smaller portion of the ingredients. But they're still in the crumb. And guess what else she knew? She understood that the crumb is coming from the whole loaf. So the authority of the loaf, the substance of the loaf, the power of the loaf, the potential of the loaf is in the crumb. So here right now is a piece of bread and I'm breaking them up into crumbs. So she was like, the rest of you all, y'all need a whole loaf. Yolanda, can you bring me that loaf? She said, the rest of you, you need a whole wheat loaf. And I don't need the whole wheat loaf. I can be and get what I need. Y'all have to have the loaf. You used to the whole loaf. Just give me the crumbs. Because what you need the loaf to be able to do, I can take these crumbs and I'm willing to fight with the crumbs. Who's willing to fight with the crumbs? I may not have all the money I need for the down payment on the house. I may not have all the credits I need to finish this course and get this degree. I may not have all the money to go buy a car that I'm believing God for. I may not have everything that is needed to see the fulfillment of this marriage be what I want it to be. I need some more patience. I need some more temperance. I need some more. Come on now. I may not have the manifestation of what I'm believing for, but I'm going to fight with what I have. I want to fight with the crumbs. Jesus looked at this. He was like, this woman won't be denied at the gate. And he was like, I haven't. She said, we deserve the crumbs for the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, hmm. he says, how great is your faith? And I'm going to add to that, how great is your fight of faith? Your fight of faith. Your, your request is granted because she wouldn't back down. We looked at David with the lion and the bear. David wouldn't back down. I got some for you tomorrow. They wouldn't back down. Down. Why are we as Christians backing down? Why are we as Christians being trapped to silence? One of the things we're doing with I'm glad God made me a girl and I'm glad God made me a boy is because we're not going to keep silent. We have a strategy against the tactics of the enemy to affirm our children's gender. They have a right. If I'm a girl, I want to celebrate I'm a girl. If I'm a boy, I have a right. I want to celebrate I'm a boy. We're not against anybody else. Whatever they believe, but we have a right to celebrate. This is my daughter. This is my son. And they want to celebrate who they are. Shouldn't they have a right? I want to bring some of the different fighters on March the 4th through the 7th. Like one of the major fighters we have. I'm going to make sure we have our stuff downloaded for tomorrow. Ambassador Ari Khanna, We're going to take a clip uh, that she's going to be ministering to us. This woman fought against France. The whole empire of France. This woman fought against AU and the United Nations. A woman that refused to go down. She's not, she wasn't going down without, and she's still fighting. She's still fighting. She's still exposing. And guess what? God is using her in a mighty way. Dr. Pearl Coupe, a fighter. Dr. Wally, a fighter. A phenomenal. Uh, Bishop Ed Smith, who's fighting, they are through the Nehemiah uh, Film Festival, they're taking over the mountain of media and entertainment so that we don't have to sit back and let the influences in the media dominate the minds of our household and our generation. So the Nehemiah Film Festival, you're going to hear all about that, how believers are coming together and putting out quality films 
from and the and the and with the he's going to be sharing for those of you that are filmmakers from around the world they're going to give you the information that you need to be able to get your film seen and financed from around the world I forgot, I think it's maybe over 800 film festivals your things will be seen. So the, all of you, so you think it's not, this is not just a little women's, cute little women's conference. No, this is a think tank. This is a conclave. These are movers and shakers. These are world changers. These are decision makers coming together. Also, we have presenters on top of their game concerning the foster care system and what's happening to our children in that system, even with adoption. Also, we have in the area of human trafficking, uh, girls that have been rescued out of trafficking and even how to detect and look beneath the surface concerning trafficking. And then we have Kofi, uh, Kofi who's going to be teaching us uh, what's the, the whole conspiracy. And she works in this very strongly and has for years as an advocate for missing children. The numbers are alarming. And guess what? Guess who's the number one at the top of the list for missing children? African-American girls and those of First Nation alarming missing the numbers are astounding and when you study you found out that it's not just happening in the united states around the world large numbers of children are going missing this is not some in some type of conspiracy theory this is reality so we're going to sit back and be trapped in silence and just not pray about it not do something about it not equip ourselves for the times remember solutions equipping us for the storms that we're facing solutions equipping us to win solutions that have been equipped with godly wisdom and as you come together you're going to meet people we, even with the teen pregnancy and and the whole uh, exposure to planned parenthood we are not playing we're coming out of this real thing oh even with the educational mountain the things that are in the curriculum and the things that they're planning to do to infiltrate the minds of our children and also we got our legislators that are going to be presenting showing how the aim and the tactic is to take the power and the right from the parent concerning the child on certain things and it's happening already where the parent is losing the right to make the decisions over their children we want to quickly begin to show you some of our other different um guests that we have and so we're ready to roll the video ashton you don't want to miss this time we bless the lord the as I was coming here, the Lord placed uh, Isaiah 60 in my, in my spirit, just one or two scriptures, verses, I believe that he's... My Instagram lovers, y'all gonna have to hop over to Facebook when this is over and make sure you see who our speakers are, our in presenters, so, so powerful. You don't want to miss it. Don't you miss it. We're about to go out the broadcast anyway. But um, thank you for hopping on. From different spheres, different backgrounds, as a rainbow nation, the enemy will not have his way. He will not bring division and strife in this place in the name of Jesus. We release peace and we release life through the Ruach breath of God. Hallelujah. So the first scripture he gave me is from Isaiah 60 verse 18. And he said just if we can just join together and an agreement just to declare that violence shall no longer be heard in South Africa, nor will devastation, nor will destruction be heard within our borders. But we are going to call our walls salvation and our gates praise. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to declare no more violence? Hallelujah. Whatever enemy is trying to bring violence in the name of Jesus, let his plans be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Whatever man, whatever group, whatever organization is trying to bring in di di division, is trying to bring in violence we stand as sons of God today blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God and so we stand together this land will not be devastated it will not be divided it will not be destroyed can we just raise up a prayer and a cry out to the Lord hallelujah and declare that violence will not be heard in this land no division no destructions our building will not be destroyed our land will not be 
be destroyed. Our institutions will not be taken out. Come on, speak. Speak to that spirit right now and declare violence. We declare Isaiah 60 verse 18. Violence will not be heard in this land. Destruction is not our purpose. It's not our purpose. It's not our portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I sit down, another just scripture just to proclaim and I'll hand over to somebody else. Hallelujah. But it also says in verse 21, Isaiah 60 verse 21 says, Your people also shall be uncompromisingly and consistently righteous. 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 They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be Sister, wow. You're talking about a fighting sister. Wow. You're talking about a fighting sister. She's fought against the system. See, we've got to push back the agenda of Satan. We don't take this like a wimp. And you're afraid of what I can't say certain things that people on my job won't like me. And if my opinion views different from theirs, that come on now. You better be a modern day Daniel, a modern day Noah, a modern day Joab. Job, refuse to compromise, refuse to bow, refuse to give in. Let's come together with our war tactics and our strategies and our logistics that we come together and say, oh, wait a minute, the enemy is going to be like, oh, my God, they have a plan. They're actually doing something. They're not just preaching, teaching, shouting, singing. They are actually have a strategy against me like Esther did, a strategy against me like Deborah did, a strategy against me like David did. A strategy against me like Jehoshaphat? Yes, we serve the same God. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So for those of you that you've allowed this pandemic, this pandemic, to make you lethargic, you shut up in the house, you work from home, little by little is dumbing down your tenacity, your fortitude, your stick to your spadazzo, your grit, your fight, your fortitude. You don't feel that fight anymore. You're not assembling together in the congregation. You feel trapped. You've been in. You don't feel like you're on top of things like you once were. Don't let this pandemic do this to you. Don't let this atmosphere in this time do it to you. There's still a fight in you. There's still another battle in you. There's still another victor. Who am I talking to today that has pretty much given up on the marriage, given up on the child, given up on this fight against a particular illness, given up on relationships, given up on starting your own business, getting given up on finishing that book or launching that book or doing that song or that play. Don't you give up and don't you lay down and take what the enemy is trying to infiltrate and, 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 and speak into your mind. Don't you do it without a fight. Where's the fight in you? And you, let me tell you something. Now, in the age we're living in now, I got an office memo for you. You got to accept this. You got to sleep with your armor on. You got to take a bath with your armor on. You got to cook breakfast with your armor on. You got to keep your armor on. Because the enemy does not play fair. He's after you and after your household. But he can't win. Because he seeks as a roaring lion. See, David went after the real lion. But Satan, as a lion, he roars. At, I remember like in South Africa, we stayed at this particular game park resort area. And they have the night roar of the lions at night. You can hear the groan. You know, it's like a rumbling groan. And they say that it can be heard for so many miles away. And what happens is that roar and that of the night roar of the, of the, of the lion and that growl, it literally paralyzes sometimes the gazelle. Like, like in other words, the lion has not captured it yet. It's the roar that presented so much fear that the little gazelle is paralyzed. They can't think. They can't move. They're trapped in the house. They don't think they can finish the book. They don't think they can start the business. They don't think they can believe to get a house. They don't believe they can believe to get a car because they, they've been trapped by the intimidation of the economy. They've been trapped by, they've been trapped by, They've been trapped by the intimidations of the roar and the fear, but it's not the lion. It's not the bite. He didn't attack you. It's just a roar. And David says, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to run to the gate of the enemy. Man, that'll confuse Satan. There's something about the way God wired me 
that not only wants to fight, but to fight for others. And right now, the biggest fight I have is for these unborn children. The biggest fight I have, I can't be pro-life and not be pro-fight. I can't be pro-life and not be pro-action. I can't be pro-life and not be pro-compassion. And it's time for our compassion to match our conviction. And for our conviction to supersede our convenience. Did you hear that? Some of you so, you know, you don't want to be inconvenienced. You got your own little world. You don't want to be bothered. You know, you got enough on your plate. I just uh, interviewed somebody yesterday that's got four children, three under three, three and under, and going to school, getting a PhD, and a husband is in ministry. They both in ministry together. I was like, and you willing to volunteer, help and volunteer for the ministry? You got all that on your plate. What kind of woman are you? That's a woman that knows how to fight. What about my brothers out there who are saying, I'm not blind to what the enemy's trying to do to this culture. I'm not blind to what he's trying to do in this nation, what he's trying to do in the world. I'm not blind to the globalist agenda of the reset and the one world government and the one world economy and the one world religion. I'm not blind to them trying to, to um, bring an inclusive mentality concerning religions where well, we're not a religion. And even in our government, in our state capital, they're praying in the name of all these gods. No, we pray to one true God. That's what Daniel taught us. We serve one true God. That's what Job taught us. His wife said, curse God and die. He said, woman, you crazy. I'm not compromising. I am not. I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to give into the fight. And then Daniel he refused to allow the lion, being in the lion's den, make him bow down to another God. These are our examples, people. How are we going to have these kind of examples in the body? And don't, don't, because that's what they were trying to do, trying to deny the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God, and now serve this God. Same with Pharaoh, serve this God. No, we don't serve any other God and we don't let anybody intimidate us because our God is the true and living God and he loves all people. And there, you were born with a fight in you. You were born with a war in you. The Lord of hosts, the Lord God Almighty, mighty in battle is on the inside of you. So I'm speaking to somebody today that needs to rise back up and fight again. War Again, don't give up. Right now, we're here at this center. I'm having to do this all by faith, step by step by faith. We don't have a, touch of, a bunch of churches supporting us. We don't have a church. No, we're a group of men and women coming together, doing this by faith. I can't wait to see you come together, um, men and women, March the 4th through the 7th. And we're going to start putting up on Facebook all the other speakers and we'll start doing clips of the other speakers day by day like Wally and different ones. So for the next two weeks, we get ready to bombard you and flood you and, and let you know there's something powerful that's going to happen. There's a round table, March the 4th to the 7th, and there's a place at the table for you. Don't forget to go to our website and get I'm glad God made me a girl and I'm glad God made me a boy. Make sure I got him turned around right. That boy's book gets me up because he's upside down. Don't forget to go there. People are ordering and we put a special message in there for your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew and affirming their faith and letting them celebrate who God made them to be even before they were in their mother's womb. And then also remember, pray for us here. We have women that are coming. Uh, they're coming like this week. Rebecca's coming from New York. We got people coming from Alabama, from North Carolina. Women are coming. Men are coming. Men, uh, uh, my son Eddie is putting the windows in this weekend. Uh, we just have so many. And don't forget to go to our website. And the, the message today that I'm teaching, there is a whole piece that we have there to, to prepare you to fight. It's called Not Without a Fight. And it's exposing all the different type of things that are the agenda of the enemy in the earth, things that are happening globally global agendas that they have that you're like oh my goodness is that where this slogan came from oh my goodness this is what they're doing and we're not going to bow into that not for one moment not one moment not one moment we want to remind you to go to um her voice uh www.hervoice.myshopify.com hervoice.myshopify.com all the things you see me wearing val has even this this is her voice this asymmetric this is all her voice a lot of african inspired clothes, jewelry, and she's still having an incredible sale for this uh, 
African-American History Month, 55% off. Can you believe that? And then the proceeds are going to our center here for the girls. And so we're excited about this, as well as our Vision House South Africa. So you don't want to miss it. Um, also, again, don't forget to go to Facebook. You'll see all the different speakers there. Our book also, Patriots of Color. People are starting to order that so you can sit down with your child and talk to them about the history of our nation with an all-inclusive and ethnicity inclusion. Let me be sure about that. And ethnicity diversity and ethnicity inclusion with Patriots of Colors showing the Latino, the First Nation, the... Um, Anglo and the freed slaves, all of us together fighting for what we know as these United States of America so that the children can hear uh, the account of our history, not just one angle of one particular people are the ones that fought for our country. No, it, God allowed a whole uh, melting pot, so to speak, to come together and make up what we know as these United States, they all fought for our freedom. And your children have a right to know about ones that were not in their textbooks. So men like Bernardo de Galvez and men like Peter Salem and men like Samuel Harris and men like James Amistad Lafayette, the things, the battles that they won that were major battles, the battle at Rhode Island, the, this regiment of five black uh, units, totally black, when they didn't think that slaves could actually be, um, Abraham Lincoln didn't believe that the slaves could actually be soldiers, you know, and then it got down so bad, he had to call on whoever he could. And then his, when his resources got so depleted, Bernardo de Galvez, he had to call on the Latinos to come and help fight for them. And Bernardo de Valgat, Bernardo de Galvez put together a army of diversity, freed slaves, First Nation, uh, and amongst the Latinos was Cubans, Puerto Ricans, uh, what we know as Mexico. They came together. And when George Washington was deplete, depleted of his resources, Bernardo de Galvez sent 70,000 U.S. dollars. Can you imagine what that was equivalent to in that day? That was probably really equivalent to probably half a million dollars or more. He sent and also a fleet of horses he sent. And um, that's what caused us to win the battle at Pensacola. And then that Yorktown battle, that Yorktown battle was won by Amistad. I mean, James Amistad Lafayette, where you can see the picture action of him as a butler peeping and listening to the spies and the clandestine uh, tactics that he was able to take back over to the other side. He disguised himself as a slave. You see him there. I love the illustrations that are done by my nephew, Cedric Spann. He's a butler, he disguised himself as uh, James Amistad Lafayette disguised himself as a runaway slave. Go back to Amistad again, Ashton, and he's sitting there listening to the tactics and the plans of the enemy and then taking those, uh, the information, the intel that he got, he took it back over to the other side. And that's how we won the Battle of Yorktown, a major battle. And then Harriet Tubman, you hold it there, Ashton Harriet Tubman, we have where she was the first woman ever to lead a military, um, what was the word we use, Yolanda? It was a military uh, tactic is another word. Uh, she was the first one to, to lead a whole military plan. And she won, absolutely won. And so she brought them the information that caused them to win. That's what I'm trying to say. So I want your children to have a proper historical account. Uh, also, too, Sojourner Truth also was a woman that did a clandestine operation and got information and took it over to generals that allowed them to win. So we played some very significant roles in our history that we never got credit for. And your children deserve to know it. So don't forget to go to the website to order those books. And we got another one coming out that's going to celebrate uh, and teach your children to celebrate the truth of the word of God, to embrace it and don't detach because you're getting ready to see in the next few months before the end of this year, a strong emphasis to dissuade our children from believing that the Bible is the only book of truth and that Jesus being the only way to God, they're going to start trying to do it's already in place to start teaching inclusion inclusion to our children so i'm telling you so we can be a step ahead of the enemy that's the only reason i'm not trying to condemn anybody no conspiracy theory we're just going to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and we're not ignorant of satan's device and we're not going down without a fight make sure you go to the website and get not without a fight you're going to see all the information things that you never ever ever knew how the spirit of baphomet and the spirit of Baal, how those two spirit works i have 
all of the links. They're all there, not without a fight. You can go to a website and um, it's there on patriciabailey.org. The website is patriciabailey.org. Can't wait to see you March the 4th through the 7th. All roads meet to sisters empowering the world, brothers reaching only, men and women open March the 4th through the 7th. You will hear from instructors, professors from around the world that many of you have never heard of before. And they're powerful in their own right, in their own region. Don't be limited to just people from the United States. God has a kingdom plan for all nations. So I've been blessed this morning. Trust that you have been blessed as we come to you from a new location here at the uh, Vision House here where we're working very hard. Uh, anyone that's in the area, in the Atlanta area, and people are coming down. We got a phone call from Karen Bridgewater yesterday. She was able to hop on a plane, come all the way from California. She was like, wait a minute, let's kind of plan it out so we can get the most out, the most leverage out the teams when they come. So we are converting the garage, a three-car garage into an entire warehouse so that as people bring pampers and formula and baby clothes also we have a site that you will see by tomorrow a site where you just like i can't come down but i want to buy some baby clothes for uh one of the first babies and help out one of mother there's a site you can go to park city kids and you're going to be able to see the clothes there on that site that you can purchase don't go to target don't go to walmart don't go to macy's go let's keep the money in the kingdom of god let's do that and don't forget to go to her voice.myshopify.com and again as you shop with the purpose the proceeds go help to fund and finance the work here and support what we're doing here. I want to make, as I go out, an appeal to men and women that are watching at any time this is being viewed. We have before us in our lifetime the opportunity to do something significant that will turn the times. Or we can sit and opt to do nothing. We can rise up and fight, or we can lay down and let the enemy just execute his will in the earth or we can be reminded that we're in the kingdom for such a time as this and as esther said if i perish let me perish but we know we won't perish because the greater one lives on the inside of us let's link arms up together let's fight together i want to hear from you some of you there are women that have been watching and pastors that have always wanted to have a teen pregnancy center, that has always wanted to have a safe house for girls in human trafficking, that have been rescued, that has always wanted to have a home where young girls that are struggling with their sexuality can come. Well, guess what? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Let's link arms together. The Vision House is here for you. And all of you that are watching have said, I can do something. I know I can do something. There are two types of people, those that talk about the problems and that's all they do is talk and procrastinate. And then there are people who rise to the occasion, they rise to the fight, and they do something. I believe you're the latter. We'll see you on tomorrow. This is Dr. Pat, and God bless you, and go have an overcoming day. You can't go down. I don't care what's going on. Amen? And then the second time, he gave them an assignment. Anybody here got an assignment from God? And he sent them ahead of him. He said, you go ahead. I'll meet you on the other side. And they got in the middle. And what happened? And, and don't you ever get to the place when he's given you an assignment and then everything happens that goes against what you think you were called to do and you wonder did he say did he say did i hear something wrong <laughs> and it said that jesus came walking but you got to remember that jesus was on the mountain and he saw them and he watched them struggling against the waves he stood there and he watched them and this is for somebody out there he's standing and he's watching you and he knows you're not going down. He knows you won't be overtaken. You just don't know it. 
And it said, and finally he came walking across the waves and looked like he was going to pass them by. And I thought that was so odd, but I think that Jesus doesn't get caught up in the middle of our dramas. He's too busy focusing on the other side. He already knows where you're going to land. And he keeps his focus there because you know what? You'll follow what you focus on. And they said, hey, over here, <laughs> right? And he looks at him, oh, well, if it's you, call me. Okay, and you know the rest of the story. But my point is, is that he's not unaware of your situation. And he's already seen the other side. So just relax. Peace. Be still. I just really got that in my spirit when we were worshiping. You know, we're talking about being brave and living loved, and I think that a lot of times what interrupts the flow of that for us is the lack of knowledge of who we are and whose we are. We have an identity crisis. No matter how many times we've been told that God loves us or, you know, you know what your name is, sometimes we're just lost in who am I really? Amen? And, you know, it's not just about who you are. It's more about whose you are. Amen? I really feel that our sense of identity affects our confidence, our bravery. And, it, and th that sense of confidence affects the choices that we make. We tend to cripple and paralyze ourselves if we don't have the confidence we need to apply ourselves to a goal, right? I, um, I have a friend at home who's brilliant. She's won all kinds of awards, Barbie. She, um, it, I mean, she moves with the, with the movers and shakers, you know, like all the wealthy people. Like if you said you needed a million dollars to invest in something, go, oh, here. <laughs> she hangs out with those kinds of people and she's, you know, always connecting people and, and doing kinds of things. But she is the most insecure person I know. Listen, it is never about the price. It is always about your capacity. If it was about the price, nobody would be buying. But there are people that are buying. So it's never about price. It's always about capacity. So that's why when I see something and the price looks very, very intimidating at a point in time, I don't get intimidated. I say, see you later. <laughs> then I go build my capacity. Then I come back and say, where are you? <laughs> Is somebody hearing me today? It's never about the price. <laughs> Don't be some of those people that get intimidated by price. It's about capacity. So what will determine your ability to bring forth the dream God has put inside you? It is your capacity. There's a guy called Ronald Wayne, and I talk about him a lot. Very interesting guy. A lot of people don't know him. You see, Apple, now Ronald Wayne right now, he lives in a mobile home, he's a broke guy, but he's one of the three founders of Apple. Apple was founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne. But when it was time for Apple to move to the next level, he did not have capacity. Let me give you a piece of advice. Not everybody that has capacity for your level right now will have capacity for your next level. You know, people, when you shift level, people will say, oh, Wale has changed. Wale should change. Because in my former capacity, we were both hungry together. In this capacity, we don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't have anything to talk about. You are still thinking of how to feed. I'm thinking of how to buy a plane. What, 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 are, we, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> What are we going to talk about? Is somebody hearing me? So if anybody wants to stay as my friend, then as I grow, you better grow. <laughs> oh, is somebody hearing me today? All right. So Ronald, when, when it was time to move, he didn't have the capacity. So he sold his 10% stake of Apple. 10%. He sold for $2,300. 
Today, Apple is worth $710 billion. If it was a nation, it would be the 20th richest country in the world. Ronald Wayne would have been a billionaire many times over, but capacity robbed him. And the lack of capacity is robbing people today. There is more money all over Africa than there are human beings. But the one thing that's holding a lot of people back is their capacity. Look, in Nigeria, people always ask, you know, people always say, you Nigerians, you shout, you talk loudly. You know, I can talk here without a microphone, you know that. Because I'm Nigerian. And why do Nigerians shout? It's very simple. We never have electricity. Why do Nigerians shout? <laughs> because electricity never took lights. Um, these are just a few. There is a, the plethora and the platform and the conclave of global leaders coming together to equip our minds to lead in these times, to dominate in these times, to win in these times, to influence in these times, and to push back the wilds of the enemy and the schemes of the enemy to determine, we determine the economy and the direction it's going. We have authority, we have dominionship, we are the vision carriers. We really, really are. And so we want you to come and be a part of this. It's going to be one of the greatest investments that you ever made. This is just a small tip. Because when you think about women like Ambassador Arikana, who stood up against France, one woman, the United Nations, one woman, the African Union, and she has her facts and she knows her facts and they're indisputable. And they help us to understand that you may be saying, how does it affect me? There is wealth in the continent of Africa. You're so concerned about trying to make your business work in the United States. You can literally have an extended business in the continent of Africa, which is the most fertile ground for business. Then also, we have people like Wale Kim, who you've just heard from, who's going to teach you wherever you're operating your business from, how to bounce back, how to bounce back. We talked about some of the other categories of how to fight for our children that are caught up in the system and how to not be, to, to literally not just sit back and accept things and be like those midwives in Egypt that refuse to kill the babies. And the list just goes on of the people that we have. And of course, Dr. Michelle Mohammed Kenny, she's the best, in my opinion, on relationships. And so you don't want to miss her session that she literally will have. She's offering some things right now. You need to go to her website, Michelle Mohammed Kenny. Kenny, she's doing some free relationship seminar things. But then also on that first week of March, she as well is having incredible teaching with workbooks and you take away so much stuff. We're going to hop on and probably do some lives together. We are sisters working together and the body of Christ working together. And again, earlier you heard Kalita, Dr. Pearl Coupe's daughter. Dr. Pearl is going to be there. It's the list is an incredible list. And some of you, uh, Bishop, um, my mind just went blank because we got three or four different bishops, but Bishop uh, Ed Smith, what am I thinking about? I'm so used to calling him pastor. I have to get used to saying Bishop Ed Smith with the Nehemiah Project. The proceeds for the projects are helping uh, even children that are trapped in the foster system. But here for those filmmakers, all of you filmmakers that are Christian filmmakers, here's your opportunity. You don't want to miss this film festival. He's going to tell you all about this. And then we have another woman, Dr. Shante, a $25 million company, investment company. It is that she's going to be sharing with us how to funnel that wealth back into our community. So that's the economy sector of our conclave coming together. These are people at the very top of their game staying in a lane. You don't want to miss it because iron sharpens iron. Where do you go? SisterEmpoweringTheWorld.com. Register now. And then, to remind you, a global leadership training for a six-month training that people did, we are giving that first year, first six month training to you absolutely free. And that's $3,000 online course, about 60 something courses you get absolutely free. Don't miss it. Because by the end of the month, you've got two more weeks by February 28th, we're not offering that anymore. So register now, register now, register now. If you don't have the whole 199, put the $25 down right now. Go to patriciabailey.org or Kamyolanda. 
patriciabailey.com just to immediately hold it but some of you you know if you're not struggling 199 dollars what is that for all of the classes and all of the teaching and a three thousand dollar course that you're getting for 199 dollars throw it on a card be done and let's get your mind ready for where god is taking you some of you are being raised to an ambassadorship level that's why we have ambassadors speaking some of you have you know inside of you that you're called to a diplomatic level you're not called to just go around and speak in churches you're called to be doing international business you're called to seeing laws be legislated some of you that are watching you know you're called to reform education and so the people that are thinking like this that are game changers decision makers are all coming together March the 4th through the 7th, and I want to see you there. Go to patriciabailey.com. Don't forget to register, hold your spot. It's going to be incredible. We're going to change the times together. Why? Because we are better together. See you tomorrow.